formed. And I want to thank the people of our great state for staying in this fight. Last night, we saw our largest death number yet. I want to repeat what I said yesterday because I think that it is critically important that this sinks in. One of the advantages from the perspective of having these daily press conferences is so many hundreds of thousands of Mississippians across the state are watching. It gives us the opportunity to speak directly to the people. And what I want you to hear me say, and I want you to understand that I am being as honest as I can possibly be with you. The threat is not gone. Even as we all want to move on, we have to stay vigilant. I know it is not easy. I know it is not fair. I also know it is not over. We have to keep fighting as individuals, and we have to keep fighting as a state. There is a reason that we have not thrown the state wide open. I hear the calls for that every single day. It's really where my instinct goes when I know and see the economic disaster that is in front of us. But I just simply cannot do that in good conscience. I want this to be over. I know that you want this to be over. But I can't just make it go away. Balance is the key. Every effort to reopen sectors of our economy has been done because we believe that it is safe to allow certain activities and to make them legal. But just because something is legal does not mean it is wise. Just because something is legal does not mean that it is smart for you and your family. You, as Mississippians, still have to make good decisions. There is no government replacement for your personal responsibility and wisdom. Please, take our warning seriously. Please, do not go back to normal. Please, do not give up. I have a real fear that I've been trying to communicate from the beginning. I hope our people are listening. Across the country, many of these social distancing measures have been a little bit like a really strict diet. People just can't sustain them for a long time. And when they start to reach a breaking point, they tend to go straight for a big old piece of chocolate cake. They give up on the mission rather than ease up on the measures. Whatever we do as a state has to be sustainable or it will do more harm than good. That's why we are working to give people some semblance of normalcy. I cannot allow you to lose morale and give up or we will see things get far worse no matter what any of my executive orders say. Please do not give up. We need you to stay smart. We need you to stay strong. You are needed in this fight. We know that not every portion of our state is the same. I've been talking with Dr. Dobbs about what we can do to stay flexible, to recognize that some counties may need more strict measures than others. We've been very good about getting resources and attention where they are needed the most and where they are needed quickly. We are discussing how to do the same with our orders and our measures. I would expect additional news on that soon. I want you to know I'm tired of all this too. I'm ready to get back to life as normal, but neither you nor I can simply snap our fingers and make that so. What we can do is try to work together to help make things better, make them 
a little safer. Make them a little more normal with kindness for your neighbors. And I know so many of you have been doing that. I see it. We all see it. Mississippians are helping Mississippians. It brings me joy in a dark time to hear your stories of compassion and resilience. I really believe that we are containing this as much as we possibly can. Do not mistake my hope and pride in the people of Mississippi for a belief that this cannot get worse. Do not confuse my belief that our strategy is strong with the notion that COVID-19 cannot kill one of your loved ones. There is hope. We are Mississippi. This is America. We have been through hard times and come through all of them stronger. We will get through this as well. I also want you to know that I trust you. I trust that you are doing the right thing in the face of tremendous pressure. That's why this has not been much, much worse at this point. I'm not lecturing or telling you what to do. I'm asking you, as a fellow Mississippian and as a fellow American, please do not give up and please do not give in. Take care of one another. Take care of your mom, your dad, your grandmom, your granddad. Take care of all of your loved ones. Today, in addition to Dr. Dobbs and Director Michelle, I've asked Drew Snyder of the Division of Medicaid to be here. He and his team have been doing excellent work, and we are getting emergency supplemental payments to hospitals to help them get through this time. We are being smart, and we are leveraging some of our resources to help support those very people on the front lines. Drew, would you please uh, address uh, that effort? Thank you, Governor Reeves. Since the outbreak began, we at the Division of Medicaid have been exploring every available opportunity at our disposal to assist in Mississippi's response to COVID-19. The latest step has been to accelerate the delivery of supplemental payments to hospitals, which will make almost $170 million in support quickly available where the most intensive treatments are being performed. Specifically, these are two pools of supplemental payments. The Mississippi Hospital Access Program, or MHAP, and disproportionate share payments, or DISH. On May 1st, hospitals received $92 million in advanced MHAP payments, and they will receive $77 million in early DISH payments on May 14th. The accelerated payment avenue made sense for a few reasons. First, the state could respond relatively quickly. Accelerated payments didn't require statutory changes, nor was it the type of change in reimbursement methodology that required the division to go through a potentially time-consuming approval process at the federal level. Second, the impact on hospitals is immediate. A challenge hospital executives frequently mentioned to me uh, that they were facing was low cash, flow, uh, cash on hand caused in part by historically low utilization. It wouldn't help hospitals that much if we increase their reimbursement rates you know, when patients aren't seeking care right now for non-emergent procedures. But coupled with the federal funding hospitals have gotten directly from Washington, these advances should help sustain them in slow months uh, until utilization recovers. And, and lastly, accelerating payments doesn't put a future strain on taxpayers. Um, the Division of Medicaid has taken other steps as well, increasing um, access to telemedicine being one. Uh, in March, Governor Reeves announced that we'd received authority to re relax federal requirements so that beneficiaries could receive telehealth services in their home through a personal cell phone, tablet, or other device. We also expanded the type of providers who could uh, deliver telehealth, including rural health clinics and our federally qualified health centers. Furthermore, we received approval from CMS to expand the services available to our home and community-based uh, waiver recipients, and those steps included increasing the availability of home-delivered meals and the availability of in-home providers.
You know, overall, most of the emergency policies we've enacted are aimed at reducing barriers to necessary care. And we're committed to responding decisively in this emergency while still considering long-term financial consequences. We wouldn't be able to take these actions with, without federal flexibilities and the full support of Governor Reeves and his outstanding team. You know, I'd like to also briefly express my appreciation to the Division of Medicaid's workforce. Medicaid's got a lot of moving parts and the staff has worked hard to quickly enact a wide range of intertwining policies. And our eligibility workforce across the state has remained committed to ensuring our beneficiaries continue to have full access to the programs in our communities. But thank you, Governor. Thank you, Drew, and thank you to your team uh, for, for those efforts. Uh, I think what you are seeing uh, every day as we bring additional uh, leaders uh, in our team uh, to report to the people of our state is our state leaders in the executive branch of government are leaning into this virus. We're leaning into this response. We are doing everything in our power to ease the burden on Mississippians. And Drew and his team, simply another example, and I'm very proud of what they're doing. In addition to that, um, on the call yesterday uh, with the Coronavirus Task Force, Vice President Pence, uh, Seema Verma, who is the administrator of CMMS, was on the call, uh, and she has worked diligently, as has so many people in the Trump administration, uh, at, may, at trying their best to allow chief executives and governors uh, to respond to what is clearly unprecedented times.